quit your job, move to Key West, and live on a boat. It can seem quite the dream. The people you're about to meet have traded a lot of comfort and safety for this chance. Live free on the ocean. And I just fell in love with it. I was like, where has this been all my life? Um, and, um, and I was like looking for my boat. Like I would have these dreams, like repetitive dreams over and over. Perfect, love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to live, raise him in a house. Uh, and we got to use a lot of water. Maybe not that. We have a lot of freedom. We do kind of what we want. Most of them also admit they couldn't afford the rents in Key West. But it is also a very challenging environment. And today, the liveaboards say that a proposed change in the law, if adopted, would put their homes and their safety at risk. What do you think of this idea of uh, re-anchoring every 90 days? I think it's crazy and it's impossible. I don't see how it could possibly work. It's, I think it's horrible. Yeah, that's, like, that's crazy. Is that a big deal? Like, that is crazy. FWC in Monroe County want the legislature in Tallahassee to give them the power to force boaters across the Keys to move their boats to a new location every 90 days. In exchange, the county would install just 70 new moorings but only in Key West. All boats not on a mooring will be declared a public nuisance if they refuse to move. They will be seized and destroyed at the owner's expense. In 2002, a county survey already counted over 800 vessels anchored across the Keys. All existing mooring fields are full. If the proposal is adopted, hundreds of boats are going to have to re-anchor every 90 days. People are going to be dropping a hook out there. There's not good anchorages out there. There's not good holding, and they're going to be drifting around like crazy. And I say, bury a three-anchor system. They have a, they have a real issue there. I've traveled the East Coast, the Bahamas and that, and I've gotten away with one anchor. But around here, it does not work too good. The holding is bad around here. All right. So well, using a three anchor system and they're heavy anchors that are buried with lots of chain with swivels. It's just a complete setup that has to be set up properly or it's not going to work. And to pull that up and move every 90 days, it's impossible. Once the anchors are buried, they're good and they work. Resetting an anchor is a dynamic process. First, the anchor must drag across the bottom until it slowly plunges into the seafloor. In the process, it trenches through the seagrass that covers much of the nearshore seabed in the Florida Keys. As time goes by, the anchor is pulled deeper into the seabed, becoming less likely to rip out during a sudden storm. Once the anchors are set, the anchor chain will tear a circle through the seagrass as the boat rotates with the shifting wind. Boaters argue that there is no rational basis to force them to pull up anchors which are already set and have done whatever damage anchors always do, and then have them start anew every 90 days with the whole destructive process. Here you can clearly see the large area of damaged sea bottom in front of an anchored boat. Comparison in even shallower water the mooring systems located in the city's mooring field cause remarkably little damage to the seagrass bed. and reset the anchors, that's going to disturb a lot of the ocean underneath and a lot of the life underneath me. Um, from time to time, if I have to keep moving them, all I'm going to do is destroy everything that lives down here on the bottom. Um, what would it take to pick up that anchor anyway? It's, it's got to be a pretty it's, it's big a anchor. Couple day, probably take me a couple of days, literally, to get everything cleaned up to get back on deck. How many anchors do you have below? I have five down right now. Five anchors. 
okay. it'll take a week to reset it. Right. Because every anchor I have down is all hand set. Actually, I think them being here for many years is a lot safer than having to keep pulling them up and redrop them. Being here for many years, all the storms that come continuously put silt over everything and continuously buries the anchors deeper. Which... That's a huge undertaking to, to move all these anchors and. I mean, these anchors are set. Yeah, we have to be able to leave and go to work, and we have to trust that our boats are going to be here when we come back. The fear of dragging anchor is one of the main concerns for the owners of anchored boats. The weather in the Florida Keys can be treacherous. This is Key West Harbor, not during a hurricane, but during a winter storm. We collected some footage from a salvage boat patrolling the harbor. During the night, many vessels dragged anchor and called for assistance. Tell me what to do, tell me what to do, buddy. By daybreak, winds were still strong. One overnight gust clocked at 59 miles per hour. Dragging anchor can be a catastrophic event. Boats can end up shredded on the rocks. The lucky ones end up stranded on the flats. Boats that drag endanger other boats. We anchored just a little outside of town. Because on more than one occasion, I've been on boats that we've had other boats break loose. You know, sailboats behind Tank Island um, or up in the harbor that will then collide with us and you know, did several hundred thousand dollars of damage. And to save their homes, boaters often take desperate action. And there's another safety issue tied into the new law. To stay put during winter storms, many local boaters have resorted to tying up to old anchoring systems left by the Navy. Ships anchors an enormous mooring chain. This too will be made illegal if proposed new legislation is enacted. Moving vessels every 90 days is insane. We value the 90-day anchoring restriction as an incentive to switch from anchoring to a safer and environmentally friendly mooring. The anchoring limitation rule should only be enforced when a public mooring is available. FWC Commissioner Robert Spotswood says that his proposed law, which applies only in the Florida Keys, is meant to help law enforcement combat derelict vessels. So we thought that the best way um, to keep a boat seaworthy and functioning is to have it move from time to time and not sit in the same place. The Boater Association believes the 90-day restriction will cause more shipwrecks in derelict vessels. What was a well-set anchor is going to have to be pulled up, put the anchor down. It's not going to be secured. That boat in high winds is going to drag, hit another boat, and then you've just got a tangled mess. A recording of an FWC board meeting provides a porthole into what could be quite a different motive for making the lives of anchored boaters more difficult. The ongoing conflict between boaters and powerful waterfront property interests. You've got people throwing their anchor behind these multi-multi-million dollar homes, right? And, you know, they're camping out, defecating over the side of the boat, you know, they wake up in the morning, their guy walks out of his house and he's the first person on the boat is just, you know, waving at them. At the meeting, FWC Major Rob Beaton tried to interject that there are already laws to prevent derelicts. We have the effective means of propulsion well, to I make think sure. it's much more than that. But the I, chairman interrupts, citing socioeconomic concerns. Yeah, I gotta tell you, there's, there's a lot of people that are just free anchoring because they don't want to pay. They don't want to pay dockage. Why, why would I pay dockage if I could throw my anchor right here in state water and no one bothers me? This man is one of those boaters anchored in front of a multi-million dollar property. He doesn't believe that the 90-day anchoring restriction is designed to combat derelict vessels. And it's a, a ruse, a guise, to uh, get people to move. I don't think that it's actually for derelict uh, situation. Yeah, a ploy. The ploy. I believe that they, uh, that they don't like a sport back here. This is the Marriott Beachside Hotel in Key West, 
where a three-bedroom suite goes for over $2,000 a night. And this is the floating village at war with the owner of the hotel. The owner is Robert Spotswood, the FWC commissioner. The North Cow Key boaters claim that Commissioner Spotswood has blocked the access to so-called Dinghy Beach by installing this fence. There's no permit for the fence. And boaters claim that the fence was part of a ploy meant to force them to leave by making it impossible to go to shore. So I had to leave my job to be able to get my wife to shore so she can work. And so why did you have to quit your job? Because there's nowhere to, uh, for us to uh, park our kayaks. Mr. Spotswood's hotel recently had activist Christine Leninger arrested, alleging she threw a panel from the infamous fence into the trash. Mr. Spotswood also wrote a formal letter to the city asking the police to stop liveaboards who had resorted to docking their dinghies at the public seawall. Uh, there's definitely a lot of power, a lot of money, a lot of special interests like in, in something like this, um, in the 90-day ruling. I think it's total insanity how I've seen this happen in, in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, where one guy with a lot of money can dictate hundreds, maybe 500 lives. You know, we all live on boats out here. We enjoy this freedom. This makes living on the boat even harder for the rest of us. I feel really threatened, threatened here by my, with my living here. Uh, I can't afford to rent in Key West. So, this is my choice of living. I work at Montessori Public School, and uh, there's also, I work with another colleague that lives on a boat. Uh, we also have a community of neighbours here who we support each other. For example, my daughter is now supporting me, taking me to work while I can't. If I had to move every 90 days, who would I be next to? I wouldn't have my, my neighborhood, my, my uh, community out here to support each other. That's a, a huge, important thing that we have out here. It would be a good idea to have moorings. In I think it's a great idea. At least in the confines of the harbor, you know, within some boundary, everyone should be on on moorings. Something safe. Because you're, yeah, you're trusting in very tight quarters. You're trusting other people's ability to anchor their boat, having the right ground tackle. 